Good evening. I'm Mark McCree. I have the distinct honor of introducing one of this evening's honorees, my good friend, your good friend, Brian Drumgoole. First, I want to congratulate Mary Anthony Suarez of the Borough of Richfield. Anthony, we've known each other for a very long time. You're an awesome individual. I just want to extend my congratulations to you and your family, and I hope you have a great evening. Having a particular job or position does not define a good leader. To truly emerge as a leader, you need empathy, integrity, confidence, vision, dedication, drive, and peer respect. There is not a person in this room that would disagree with me when I say Brian Drumgoole possesses each and every one of those attributes. On March 5th, New Jersey, as we knew it, changed. By the time the first case of COVID-19 hit Fort Lee, our mayor, Mark Sockledge, Brian Drumgoole, as well as the Borough's administration, had already assembled a COVID-19 task force. One of the many reasons that Brian is being honored this evening is a result of the leadership and commitment he displayed to ensure the residents of Fort Lee were well informed and safe during the pandemic. Brian was instrumental in establishing the COVID call center, the borough-wide testing sites, and when birthday celebrations were canceled, Brian took part in the birthday drive-bys that were set up by our Fort Lee Volunteer Fire Department. We all owe Brian a great debt of gratitude for making our community a better and safer place to live and raise our families. A great leader will blaze trails in almost any situation, and Brian's track record clearly proves he does that every day. For those of you who don't know Brian, he is a detective with the Fort Lee Police Department, fire chief elect for the Fort Lee Fire Department 2021, coordinator of the Office of Emergency Management, a member of the Fort Lee Democratic Committee, a member of the Fort Lee Palisades Park Elks Club, a contractor and developer. More importantly, Brian is a loving husband to his wonderful wife, Nadine, a caring father to his beautiful children, Ivy and Eli, a son, a brother, a brother-in-law, an uncle, and a friend to many. Brian is probably one of the youngest recipients of this honor. That alone speaks volumes as to his character. As you heard, Brian wears many hats, but we all know Brian's favorite hat is the plastic red fire chief hat. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you 2020 Person of the Year, Mr. Brian Drumgoole. Good evening. Thank you, Mark, for those kind words and your continued support and friendship. Without your continued support and friendship over the years, I would not be standing here today. Congratulations, Mayor Suarez, on being named 2020 Fort Lee Regional Chamber of Commerce Man of the Year. The residents of Richfield are extremely fortunate to have such a dedicated public servant such as yourself. I am personally honored to, have to share this evening with you. I stand before you honored and humbled to be named the Fort Lee Regional Chamber of Commerce 2020 Man of the Year. For those of you who may not know, I was born and raised in the borough of Fort Lee, where I continued to reside with my wife Nadine, daughter Ivy, and son Eli. The Fort Lee Emergency Services have played a major role in my life. At the young age of 16, I joined the Fort Lee Fire Department as a junior auxiliary. I rose through the ranks, becoming a probationary member, a regular member, an engineer, a lieutenant, a captain, a battalion chief. I'm currently the deputy chief, to which I stand before you as the 2021 department chief elect. In 2004, I was hired by the Bergen County Sheriff's Department as a corrections officer, which quickly followed by one of the most honorable times of my life. In January of 2005, I was sworn as a Fort Lee police officer, where I am currently employed. In 2014, I was assigned the rank of detective and transferred to the Narcotics Bureau. In 2018, I was bestowed the honor of being placed on loan to the Bergen County Prosecutor's Office Narcotic Task Force, where I am currently assigned. In June of 2019, I was bestowed yet another honor to be named the Borough of Fort Lee Office of Emergency Management Coordinator by Mayor Mark Sockledge and the entire governing body. Boy, did I not know what I was in for. In the early months of 2020, I was contacted by Borough Administrator Al Restaino, 
who advised me that I would be placed on a local COVID-19 task force, along with members of the governing body, emergency service department chiefs, and various department heads within the borough. The task force quickly went to work in an attempt to prepare for a health pandemic. I remember it as if it was yesterday, sitting at a round table discussing what would we do if it hit a high rise? What would we do if it hit the senior center or a senior building? What would we do if it hit a school? Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pride and honor that I inform you that this local task force met all challenges head on. Yes, there are some things we may have done differently if we had to do them again, but for a large majority of the tasks performed, they were performed to near perfection. This local task force would soon coordinate the distribution of PPE to our heroic, and I emphasize heroic EMTs and police officers who responded to hundreds of COVID-19 related calls and performed countless life-saving measures to our borough residents and guests. The task force quickly opened a COVID-19 call center that the general public could contact and ask any questions they may have. Food and grocery shopping was coordinated for our seniors and handicapped residents. A safe house was opened for all first responders and essential personnel who reside in town so they did not have to fear bringing the virus to their own home, which could have potentially infected a loved one. A Fort Lee Friends List was created for individuals who felt alone and just needed someone to talk to. All of these are just a few tasks performed by these outstanding local task force. When we thought that was not enough, the local task force reconvened and began the coordination of offering COVID-19 testing to all of our residents. A drive through testing facility was constructed where residents could safely be tested. To diminish the possibility of any long lines at the drive through facility, a mobile testing unit was constructed that would be used at all high-rise buildings for those who wished to participate. Members of the local task force participated in numerous video programs for social media, along with town hall phone conferencing with our entire community so that not one resident, business owner, or guest was left in the dark. Ladies and gentlemen, this is just a quick glimpse of what this local task force was able to accomplish. Fort Lee quickly became the model for many, many towns, not only in our neighboring communities, but statewide. I would have never imagined partaking in phone conferences with the governor and his staff, along with our governing body, to ascertain how we were dealing with the first case and what we were doing moving forward. This is all a credit to our entire local task force and most importantly, Fort Lee as one community. I would be remiss if I did not inform you of the members of the dedicated, loyal, and persistent task force. Mayor Mark Sokolich, Councilman Harvey Somer, Administrator Restaino, Mayor and Administrator Assistant Marianne Cetera, Health Officer Jill Scarpa, who spent countless hours, days, and weeks conducting contact tracing, Police Chief Matt Hinsey, EMS Chief Steve Curry, EMS Coordinator Paul Fabia, the Fire Department Chief Don Savaggio, School Superintendent Ken Rhoda, Parking Authority Director Gloria Gallo, Senior Citizen Center Director Chris Skimbrus, Director of Public Works Michael Moresca, Director of the Fort Lee Library Chris Ugolinis, Director of Recreation Cheryl Weston, and Public Communication Director Kristen Schulman. This local task force would not have accomplished what we did without the assistance of each emergency service command staff, the secretary and deputy coordinators of OEM, and all borough employees and volunteers. These individuals performed at a level that quite frankly would surpass any other borough within the state of New Jersey. While I stand here before you as the designated man of the year, in my opinion, all of the individu individuals named above along with the ones who I may have forgotten to mention are collectively men and women of the year, if not the decade. One group of individuals who may often go unnoticed but deserve all recognition that comes their way is Mayor Mark Sokolich and the entire governing body. From the beginning of this pandemic, this governing body made themselves available for whatever the task force requested. From finding funds for PPE, to hosting various town hall conferences, to assisting at the local testing sites. This governing body is not the type to sit back and watch. These dedicated individuals place boots on the ground each and every day.
For example, if we were scheduled to set up a cone line at a testing facility at 6 a.m., they were there at 5.30 a.m. with coffee for everyone. I am extremely honored to have been afforded the opportunity to work besides them throughout this pandemic. There are also two other heroes in attendance this evening that seek no recognition but deserve all the recognition possible. Some of you know, however most of you do not know, that at the young age I was diagnosed with a severe learning disability called dyslexia. I was unable to retain anything I attempted to read and could not learn in a normal environment. To add to the situation, I was diagnosed with numerous, let me stress numerous, behavioral allergies that may have made my younger days somewhat challenging. These two heroes are my parents, Kevin and Nancy Drumgool. Kevin and Nancy immediately obtained medical and educational resources so that I could overcome these medical and educational issues. This included sending their eighth grade boy to an all dyslexia boarding school in upstate New York. If it was not for the love and dedication to, fa to, the, to family provided by Kevin, my father, and Nancy, my mother, I would not be standing here before you today. Dad, Mom, thank you for never giving up on me and enabling me to serve and give back to our beloved Fort Lee, which has offered so many experiences for everyone. In closing, I would like to thank all of my family and friends who are always there by my side. Whether you're a business partner, a brother or sister fireman, a brother or sister police officer, a family member or a friend, you have all played a major role in my life, which has afforded me the opportunity to serve the borough of Fort Lee. To my wife, Nadine, my daughter, Ivy, my son, Eli, I love you more than you will ever know. Thank you for allowing me to serve our great community and for always standing by my side. God bless America, God bless Fort Lee, and let's all enjoy this evening as one strong Fort Lee community. To the entire Fort Lee Regional Chamber of Commerce, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for bestowing the honor to be the 2020 Person of the Year. Thank you.